I'm David Mason, the Director of Public Health for the Town of Sandwich, doing public service announcement number 13. Uh, today with us we have uh, Town Administrator Bud Dunham and the Clerk, Taylor White. Uh, we're going to talk about some government operations, but as always, we'll start with Chief Burke for an update of where we stand with the coronavirus. Uh, thank you, Dave. Uh, our numbers did go up, uh, not surprisingly, with the Easter holiday, but we have nine active cases, uh, 50 recoveries, uh, two deaths, and we still have two uh, residents that are hospitalized in good condition. Um, just to remind folks, uh, social distancing, uh, Still is in effect. Uh, I did see over the weekend Massachusetts and uh, Minnesota are still on the upswing in terms of cases. So the projected peak that I heard this weekend was April 29th, which would be Wednesday. But again, that's been a moving target as we go through. So I ask people to continue following the social distance guidelines uh, and that the group is working diligently on uh, the phase one, also the reopening of town government, which will happen at some point here in the future. So we had, we had talked about previous PSAs as far as um, when you mentioned that it was probably uh, the jump or the small bump we've seen would probably have to do with Easter. We mentioned that prior. Why do we know it's Easter? Because uh, you, you work your way back 14 days from uh, the positive cases, which uh, we were notified on the 25th, which was Saturday. So you work that back two weeks. That's the 11th. Uh, roughly 11th or 12th so um, and I also forgot to mention and, uh, and uh, I'll mention on the nursing home testing which was uh, in the paper uh, over the weekend and last week uh, we have about 95 percent of the results back so roughly 212 total tests there uh, roughly 90 to 100 were residents and the rest were staff um, three positive staff members and as of now though there are still four to six tests that are going to be redone uh, zero residents Cape Heritage, which is a testament so far to their work and diligence and following the guidelines that the team has put forward. And again, people need to remember they started over 45 days ago implementing some of the key things that we recommended. And with our personnel being in and out of there all the time, it's just, uh, it's good to see. And, and we can't rest on that because, uh, you know, we have to continue with the social distancing and the PPE guidelines. But that was good to see, at least initially. And again, we still have about four to six tests that are outstanding. We're waiting to come back from the National Guard. Very good. All right, to the discussion of the business of the town, um, upcoming election, town meeting, and budget. The uh, Bud, what are, what are the major fiscal year scheduling changes the community should be aware of coming up? As we had highlighted a couple weeks ago, the last time Taylor and I were in, um, there have been some changes since then, and we have a little bit more information on when things will actually happen. So um, one of the main things is the special state election from Senator DiMacito's vacancy, coupled with the annual town election, have both been set for Tuesday, May 19th. Um, and Taylor's going to go through a lot of those details in a few minutes. Um, in addition, uh, the state gave us the authority to move the uh, due date for our real estate taxes for abatements and exemptions. So uh, that was moved from May 1st, which is the normal time fourth quarter tax bills and abatements are due, to June 1st. So that hopefully will give the public a little bit of a break. Um, one of the things that we're recommending, because again, the offices aren't physically open to the public, uh, we do have uh, limited staff working in most buildings, but we have installed a drop box, for example, at the Town Hall Annex, so people can drop off uh, any real estate payments, um, any bills that they might be interested in paying. And I know with Taylor's office, too, on the special election, if people decide to fill out um, absentee forms or fill out paper ballots, uh, they can drop those off in that as well. And then probably the biggest thing that we've been working towards, which is uh, typically the first Monday in May is our annual town meeting. And the selectmen voted um, quite a bit ago, I think it was at the beginning of April, to move that to June 15th, which is a Monday. Um, that's what we're going with for now, depending on what the governor's office um, issues as in terms of orders, we may have to amend that. Uh, the, I think as we talked about the last time, the state has given us some leeway on certain laws, but um, not much leeway on others, so we're trying to sort of walk that fine line about being able to still get things done, but meet the requirements that the state imposes on municipalities. 
So the, the um, on the federal level and the state level, there's talks about the impact and the, due to the decline in revenue. What changes are you making to the FY 2021 budget, or what are you recommending to absorb the impacts because of the coronavirus on re revenue? Yeah, we've gotten very little guidance from the state at this point, which is to be expected. They're so focused on the public health emergency like they should be. Uh, we haven't gotten a lot of uh, advice in terms of what to expect in terms of uh, state aid. The uh, large amount, seven, over $7 million, goes to the school department every year. So uh, we haven't heard much on that. Just to be safe, um, the budget that the selectmen voted in terms of expenses has all been honored. But we dropped our revenue assumptions quite substantially, almost $500,000 over the last few weeks. And then at last Tuesday night's finance committee, meeting that board voted to support unanimously the budget with the reduced um, revenues. We're hopeful that's enough. If not, there's things we can consider like putting off the capital budget to a fall special town meeting if need be. Um, there's some other things that we could contemplate as well. I think what our big worry is is more FY22, meaning a year from now rather than where we sit right now uh, for FY21. Um, the other thing I'd like to point out is that um, people have heard us talk through the years that we're not like other Cape Towns. Demographically, we have the far and away the least number of second homes. Um, we don't have multi-million dollar properties and huge groupings of them like other communities do. And most of the time we see that as a way that hurts us financially. It's actually good in this sense because we're not as dependent on um, you know, rooms, rentals, short-term rentals, all those things that when the further you go down Cape, the more and more those budgets are dependent on those monies and we're really not as, as heavily influenced by that. So we think so far that we're being prudent but ready to be flexible if we have to make bigger changes. Well, it's good the Finance Committee made that vote too for the budget and nailed that down. So that gives you some something to work with there. The, um, and then the Board of Selectmen will be continuing their work, so they have their first virtual meeting coming up. So what, how, uh, how does the uh, community uh, per, not participate in that, but uh, you know, how is that gonna work so they can see it? Right, so we're gonna hold a 100% remote meeting uh, using uh, the Zoom technology. Um, we'll be able to invite the attendees, and one of the attendees that'll be invited is Sandwich Community Television, so they'll be able to uh, broadcast live and also uh, record um, as well as us the actual meeting so the public will be able to watch normally um, at our last meeting which was a combination of remote and in person uh, in early April it included a, a um, an email address where public could write in comments and ask questions during the meeting so we had that live during the meeting and then when we got to that point in the agenda um, we read any questions that we had received and we had received one during the meeting. So that'll be publicized as well. Um, I think one of the key things to point out is like what we're dealing with with this emergency is so much different than the normal emergencies that Chief Burke and I usually deal with. You know, if you think if it's a, a potential storm coming, a hurricane, um, a singular event that causes us to react, like oftentimes we're fixated on that event for, you know, three to five days where it takes up almost 24 hours a day in terms of a, a public response from our departments. This is so much different because it's, it's dragged on so long. I think our group's first meeting was in you know, mid-February trying to prepare for it. And then uh, we had several other meetings and then once we got our first positive case in mid-March, you know, we've literally met every single day since then with the exception of uh, Easter weekend and this past weekend. So um, that's a lot different. And so what I'm having to do with the Selectman Thursday night is they're actually having to consider the town meeting warrant, which we hope we'll be able to act on by June 15th unless we get other guidance. But my goal is to get them to vote the articles in the warrant and give us the flexibility to work with town council. And that's the other thing I wanted to stress so the public was aware is that flexibility. So I can't stress enough how uh, supportive and understanding the Selectman have been through this whole process in terms of supporting our command team's efforts and the decisions we make every day. And it's sort of unique because they have to take a back seat when it comes to emergencies, which is at some times can be counterintuitive. Um, but they've had to like give authority to my position, to the assistant town manager's position, and to others to try to keep the business going and to let us make the decisions that we need to make in real time. 
and I, and I want to thank other departments and uh, staff as well. Um, but for example, the Historic District Committee gave full authority to the building inspector to keep those permits moving. I know the Board of Health has delegated a lot to you, Dave, to be able to keep um, you know, public health issues at the forefront, enabling you, enabling you to make decisions on the spot. Um, another great example is our Conservation Commission has given the authority to their staff. So, I mean, there's a, a lot of times of emergency. It requires certain groups to take a step back and let the daily staff try to get stuff done. And it's been rewarding to see that we've been able to keep those things moving. Um, but it also means them, um, in a way, like recognizing that there's not as much that they can do, but they've been incredibly supportive throughout this whole process. Very good. And, and it is frustrating because what you're dealing with, like you had mentioned, a storm comes in, storm goes out. And this, this is not dictating. We are dictated by uh, what is occurring with the virus. And so it becomes a moving target. And speaking of frustration, we'll, we'll start having that discussion with Taylor as far as uh, uh, what to expect with the voting election, uh, with the voting this year. So what do you recommend uh, for residents for voting in the May 19th election? All right, as, as Bud previously stated, two elections that day. So voters need to be prepared that the local annual election has been moved to May 19th and the special state election. So anybody who voted uh, on March 3rd, familiar with that process, went to the check-in table and were offered two ballots. That's going to be the same procedure that we're going to take um, at this election on the 19th. One of the big questions that I've been getting is um, ballot security. A lot of people traditionally love to go to the polls and cast their ballot. Uh, in a normal situation, I encourage that. We like that. At this situation, we're asking that that not take place. But ballot security, we're doing everything we can uh, in accordance with state and federal law to ensure that uh, when someone casts a ballot through the mail, uh, it is done uh, correctly, which we've always done in the office, but I want people to just know that that is the case. If you vote through the mail, your ballot is counted on election day. Um, there is always the option for you to call our office once you've mailed your ballot or uh, email us uh, asking if you've it's confirmed it's been received. We're happy to, to confirm those things. Typically, that's not a process that we do, but in this case, if you have any concerns, please call us. So with that said, um, the May 19th election is going to take place. We are taking every precaution that we currently uh, have in place to us through uh, JJ, the fire chief, uh, as well as our facilities department to ensure that the election day is run as safe and as smoothly as possible. For not only those people who are sitting there in administering the election all day, we have about 36 to 40 workers that work every day uh, during an election, but also the public coming in and out. So we're, we're not requiring, but we're strongly uh, requesting, and Dave, you can back me up on this, that people do wear their masks when they come to vote. Uh, it's, we're just trying to make sure that everyone is in a safe environment and for those that do show up on election day. The election workers will be required to uh, wear all their PPE. Uh, there will be plexiglass shields installed at the check-in and check-out table for those who are going to be handed a ballot, uh, and then checking out and then going to the, uh, the ballot box to cast their vote. Um, there was the space is on the floor gonna be marked out so people know what social distance uh, looks like. Um, we will also have plenty of uh, cleaning products, not only for the workers, but also for the general public that's gonna be coming in that day. We are also going to be uh, utilizing someone at each one of the voting locations, the Wing Oak Ridge and Forest Dale School to be sanitizing throughout the day, all the voting surfaces. Um, working right now with trying to find a way that uh, pens can be cleaned. Uh, we might be able to use single use pens or small pencils, like golf pencils that people can vote their ballot on and then put them in a bucket and they don't have to be touched again for the rest of the day. We're working on some of those type of um, measures. This is the first time we've obviously done this, so we're trying to do the best job we can. Uh, talking about voting through the mail, which I mentioned earlier, that is our number one priority. Our office is working uh, fully operational. We are furiously working every day, getting applications that are coming through, not, in the lock, not only in the lockbox out front of our office, but through the mail and through the email. We're encouraging people, the easiest way for us to receive your early vote applications is through email. Send them to us, uh, I can't guarantee, but they usually go out within a few hours of them getting in via email. So we're doing as fast as we can, pushing them out. As of this morning, I'd say we're probably uh, up 
around 700 plus who have voted uh, that method already. So we're, the process is working. We're about three and a half or three weeks out from that election date. Typically, town elections do not garner a lot of interest. The average turnout in a local election is roughly between 2,000 and 2,500 people. Uh, there's no contested races on this ballot except for one race for the planning board. So it's, it's not as if we're going into an election season right now where there's school committee contested races and board of selectmen. It's just one planning board seat. No deference to the planning board, but there's not a lot, lot going on in the ballot. Uh, the other race for the special state senate seat, there's obviously two individuals running for one, uh, one seat. So we don't really know what to expect for turnout. Um, but either way, both of those applications, and I make it very clear, there are two applications. There's an application for the municipal election, and there's a separate application for the special state election. If you want a ballot for each or one or the other, you must fill out the appropriate application and send it in to us. Um, as soon as we get that, that's mailed out to the voter. The voter in turn mails, uh, fills out that ballot and then mails it back to us uh, or, or drops it off in the drop box. Um, Taylor, let's, let's just say if the um, state moves the election out, are those, per, are those ballots that people filled out uh, and mailed in still valid with re, uh, for that election? That's a good question, Dave, thank you. The, uh, the original date of this election, the special election anyway, was March 31st. We had obviously received a lot of ballots that have come in prior to that March 31st date. Any, any ballots that were received have just basically sitting on ice and are waiting till the 19th at this point. If anyone votes up to this point and that May 19th election date is moved, whether it be for the town election or the state election, all of those just move forward and they just get counted towards that election. That date is really irrelevant. When the vote is cast, the vote is cast. Okay, and as far as getting uh, more information, if they wanted to follow up on that to vote through the mail, what's the best source? You can either send us an email. Uh, the, the, the town's website, the town clerk's portion of the town's website, right at the top of the page, you really can't miss it, has that information as far as our email address where you can email those applications as well as the two applications right up top. Uh, people can always call the office. We're there all day, 508-888-0340 and uh, ask us any questions that they have. And I would encourage folks to, if you're voting through the mail and you happen to know your neighbors typically like to vote in these local elections or the special state election, pass it along. Let them know this information. Uh, we are fully capable uh, right now of getting out uh, thousands of these ballots and having them back in plenty of time. The timing is the other issue. I've been stressing this every time I talk about this issue. The process of getting an application to us, us mailing you a ballot and the ballot coming back does take time. People who are interested in doing this need to do it, I would say, at least no later than four or five days prior to the election. And if you do it after that time frame, we cannot guarantee you that not only will you not receive your ballot in time, but if you get it back to us, other than dropping it off in the box out front, if you were to mail that ballot, it has to be in our possession by 8 p.m. the close of polls on the 19th. Um, there's a lot of misunderstandings out there that if they're postmarked, they will be counted. That's not the fact. They need to be received in the office prior to the close of polls on election day. So people need to keep that timing in mind when they're going through the process. So, the, so you as the clerk and your poll workers would really prefer that people vote by mail. We would prefer you vote by mail. We realize that there's gonna be uh, people that are gonna come out and vote on election day, and we will make sure that that is run smoothly and efficiently, and their right to vote will be upheld, and they will we'll do it as quickly as, as we can. Uh, but we are encouraging the more people to do it by mail, the better, and they can ensure that the safety of their ballot being cast will, um, will definitely be upheld. Um, and like I said, if people have concerns, if you mail your ballot back, you're not sure it came back, call us, email us, we're happy to give you a confirmation. Very good. The, um, and again, uh, the COVID team is uh, reviewing the operation for the voting booths to ensure that uh, one, its poll work is a safe and two, those participating are safe also, but we prefer the mail. Anything else that anyone would like to add? I think we're all set. So thank you very much. Again, be safe, wear a mask, be considerate of everyone around you. Thank you. Thank you.